explosion. That engine has been leveled. Rob Wendland is immediately wondering, just like the rest of us, what just happened? Derry McMillan is still inside the cockpit, probably wondering what just hit him in the back of the head like a sledgehammer. When you introduce nitromethane, especially when you're burning close to 90 gallons a minute, things like this can happen. It could be as much as just cylinder head seal that can cause an issue like this. This is a block I've got in for repair. It's number six on this block and it's had some issues. There are so many different factors on a nitro burning engine that can make this happen. Too much compression in that cylinder, not enough fuel in that cylinder. Another cylinder that maybe dropped during the run and this cylinder was the next in line to pick that load up and it overworked that cylinder. And basically what it's doing as it's going down the track is trying to knock that cylinder head off the top of the block anyway. So to start this repair, and keep in mind, I'm going to do this repair with nothing but hand tools. There's going to be no CNC equipment involved, anything like that, but I'm going to do it all by hand. The first thing I'm doing is knocking all this slag, which is burned aluminum, cylinder head, sleeve, piston that has been splattered onto this block because guess what? It doesn't weld very good. If you try and put a bead over the top of this stuff, it'll do nothing but be contaminated. It'll have holes in it. It'll be a really, really bad repair. And so it almost got to be just like a, uh, I don't know, like you're getting a cavity out of a tooth, I guess, as you're a dentist, it's just a little bit bigger. I've got to get every ounce of this stuff uh, off of this block without removing a bunch of the block. You know, the more I remove, the more I'm gonna to have to weld and build back up. So I'm just gonna take my time and just try and get out everything that I can see and get to. So next, I'm just gonna go ahead and scuff the top of this um, to get anything else off the top of the block that I'm gonna be welding over. And also I'm just making sure that it's nice and flat with this little flat bar that I have. So the next deal I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep this block for welding. So I have a stainless steel wire brush that I use and it's nothing but for cleaning aluminum for welding. I also use acetone on that brush and scrub as much as I can and blow it off. Then I come back and take acetone again and I clean all my welding rods that I'm going to use, and I'll go in and clean the block as well. In previous videos, I have told you how I weld aluminum blocks. Matter of fact, I use this setting for all my aluminum. Um, now, if I have something that's really, truly contaminated, I'll change it up and um, change the balance and the frequency for cleaning. But generally, when I'm welding a block, I run a very high frequency, over 300. And I run uh, a negative, um, which is the wave when it's going down, uh, the amperage for it, I run at you know 250 plus. I run a little over 100 in positive. And what this does is it saves the tungsten. I mean, I've been welding with this tungsten, and I'm not kidding you, and I got a bunch of projects laying around that I've been doing. I've been welding with this thing for over a month, the same tungsten piece. Now you can see when I started welding on this one area, I started to get some contamination. So I stopped, I'm trying to heat it up, burn it out. I'm, matter of fact, I even grind it back out a little bit, come back again, clean it, and hit it again until I get a really good bead. So here's one of the first layers. My biggest thing is, is making sure that I've got a good concentration of aluminum to the block, that these two are married together real well, and then I'll start building them back up. But again, we're gonna go ahead and peen this thing too. Now, somebody was telling me on some of my comments, I really didn't know what the exact word was, you know, besides stress relieving when I'm beating on this thing, but I called it kind of reforging. And it says you're making the molecules more dense 
um, just like the forging itself, which is, uh, I guess, kind of what I was trying to get at. You know, it's not a soft weld. Matter of fact, it's going to be nice and hard and it's going to machine just like the block. Another question I was asked was, yes, I do weld with helium. I have a really nice mixer. And I'm able to adjust, you know, of course, the flow of both the argon and helium um, and the percentage. I can sit there and change it. I can dial it right in for whatever I need. So you won't see any kind of preheating on this block. And when you do that, you don't have to sit there and concentrate on one area, getting it heated up to get that puddle started before you start adding aluminum to it. You know, I had another comment that made me laugh so hard. It says, man, this guy's pretty damn chatty. Maybe we could just sit there and watch you um, weld this thing. But no, uh -uh. you're going to just hear me because I think I have a lot of good things to say. <laughs> so here she is and all her ugliness. But I'll tell you this, it's got a lot of good weld on it. And the next step is kind of cool. I told you this was going to be a hand operation. So I've got this old router. I paid $5 for it at a garage sale one time. And so I just get carbide, uh, you know, you can buy the kits for doing uh, actually wood and they're all carbide tipped. And so I went ahead and got me um, a, the whole kit and I basically got one that's about a, I guess it's about an inch and a quarter in diameter and I'm gonna surface the top of this block with it. I'm gonna get it really close and then I'll finish it by hand, but this is what it looks like to get the initial part knocked off of it. Not too bad, right? So I'll leave it within about two or three thousandths. And the next thing I'll do is I'll take some shipping tape and I'll put it on all the areas that I don't want to scuff. You know, when you have a nice long file like that, sometimes it can get close and then you, all of a sudden you look down and you're filing on another area. So this prevents that from happening. So somebody's gonna come up with the question, hey Rob, how come you just don't throw it up in the machine and go ahead and deck that top of the block? Well, if you looked that the sleeves recess in the block, they actually stick up about six to eight thousandths. And that's what makes the seal on these head gaskets. It's a solid head gasket going on an aluminum head. So when you deck it, you're gonna have to do all the recesses as well. And you're gonna have a block that's different from one side to the other. So now I'm gonna take the sleeve, I'm just gonna trace around it real quick because there is what I need for that to fit in there. It almost fits right now anyway, there's a little bit of weld hanging out, which I knew it was gonna happen. So I mark it really well. And again, I'm gonna take my trusty old router and I'm gonna fix the hole. This part you gotta be damn careful because anybody that knows that uh, running a router and you're, you know, doing it all by hand, that thing wants to grab hold and it wants to eat some aluminum. So I just took my time with it. I just followed that line uh, right to the T and end up just re-cutting the recess in that one area where I had the weld hanging out. So now I'll take that sleeve and I'll set it in the top of this thing and we'll see if she fits. If it's good. Matter of fact, it fits really nice. So at this point, we have the deck, the top of it, flat, ready to rock. We have the recess for the sleeve done. And now we're gonna relieve the area for where the push rods go. Once I get that area done, then I'm gonna concentrate on the inner stud hole. The inner stud off the cylinder head goes straight down through this hole. It gets a, a big, thick washer on the backhand side, and that's the inner head stud. So you have your outer studs on the outside and you have the inner stud that goes down through that center hole right there. And this is what she looks like. I mean, it really came out pretty damn nice. So I'll put a little heat to her because these things do have uh, a little bit of press when you're putting these sleeves in. Matter of fact, the more press you have, probably the better it's going to keep the sleeve rounder because these sleeves aren't that thick. So I pulled a couple of these sleeves out of my little refrigerator and we're gonna beat these things in. Yeah, we're gonna beat them in. There's no pressing kind of thing. It's basically a chunk of aluminum and a big hammer. Darton sleeves out of California owned by Dave Clinton. They make 100% of the sleeves that are ran in top fuel. Matter of fact, almost all the sleeves that are ran in drag racing uh, for alcohol cars, A-fuel cars, 
and top fuel. They're a leader in the import market as well. Now, I'll get the next sleeve in this thing and get it beat in. But guess what? What do you think? I did another hammer. Now, one was a snap-on in the last video. This is a Mac. I got problems. Um, obviously, that's whatever. Somebody said, hey, it's probably the chemicals and stuff you use to clean your hammer over the years. That's what makes them brittle. Yeah, <clears throat> more than likely. Again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all my followers. Stay tuned for more great content. Thanks again.